Hello and welcome to the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast. The intention of this podcast is to help you to open your mind, get curious about yourself and raise your consciousness levels. Through these conversations, we hope that you will go on an inward journey to discover the truth of who you are and become the conscious creator of your life. I am your host, Karen Maloney, and I work as an inside out coach, mentor and guide, helping women to revolutionize their internal chatter and create a life they love. Listen to the podcast on Apple, Spotify or whatever platform you choose and be sure to like, subscribe, review and share the podcast. Check out my website as well, soulpowerlight.com for more info. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back. It's me, Karen Maloney. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I'm delighted to have you and once again have another wonderful guest for you and conversation and tips and lots of information today. But again, before we jump into today's episode, please, once again, I remind you and invite you to join my mailing list if you wish. Go to my Instagram page at Soul Power Light is my handle. If you click the link in the bio, it's top of the list there. And I look forward to connecting with you there. So then back to today's guest. And today I have Gina Toms joining me. And Gina is a love, sex and pleasure coach who teaches women how to awaken their natural sensuality in order to live more radiant, pleasure filled and joyful lives. She believes that pleasure can be a pathway to presence and deeper spiritual awakening and is especially passionate about the power of conscious self-pleasure to transform and heal from the inside out. Gina works with women one-to-one in coaching sessions and her mission is to remove the stigma associated with self-pleasure and create a world where it is encouraged and celebrated instead of shrouded in shame. Well, I loved this conversation with Gina and as we shared at the beginning of the conversation, we actually know each other and met in Colombia in South America a number of years ago and always kept an eye on each other's journeys and it was such a pleasure to connect again in this way. Gina shares so much in this conversation and you can tell she is passionate about this work and she shares how she came to this work also almost by chance but then again there's no such thing as coincidence when she found herself in Mexico and she connected with the spiritual community and she started learning more about Tantra because she had been on a journey of loving herself more and feeling more worthy since the breakup of a dysfunctional relationship But she realized that she was still very blocked in relation to relationships and sexuality. So in Mexico, she learned so much, but also she realized that a lot of what she was learning was more aimed towards couples to explore within relationship. So then she came across self-pleasure as a route to sacredness, to the divine, to pleasure and everything shifted for her. So she talks about that and inner empowerment and releasing the shame and the stigma and the miseducation around sexuality really as well. And she talks about how we can bring pleasure into all forms of life and how in one sense in order to be in or connected to that sacredness of sexuality, it's exploring much deeper than just the primal lustful level of love or relationships that can sometimes happen. Because connecting on a sacred level brings up more wounding and pains and blocks within each partner in a couple. So it's bringing in that heart connection and intimacy and honesty and vulnerability is so much harder than just connecting on a physical and emotional level. So a beautiful conversation and Gina even shares a couple of books that really helped her in her reconnection to her own self-pleasure and her own sacred sexuality, which does have a real divine innocence to it. So enjoy this conversation. Let me know what you think. And if you want to follow Gina or find out more about her work or about her coaching, you can follow her on Instagram. Her handle is at Gina, G-I-N-A dot heart. Enjoy. 
Welcome, everybody, and thanks for tuning in for another episode. I have another wonderful guest for you again this week. And this week, I actually know my guest. Would you believe that myself and Gina met in Colombia back in 2017? So you're very welcome, Gina. Thank you so much, Karen. I'm so excited to be here today. I know. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you as well and about your work and what you're doing now and how you've transitioned. And who would have thought all those years ago we'd be connecting on a podcast like this? So I love how how things unfold and journeys go and how the universe works. It's it's brilliant. So first of all, so brilliant. As, yeah, it's amazing um, when we just get out of our own ways, they say, and allow things to unfold. We never know what will what will come back. Mm. But you're now a love, sex and pleasure coach. So maybe just to set the scene for all the listeners as well, just explaining some of your journey or what brought you to this to this work. Mm, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Well, you know, it has been quite a journey and a long journey, as I think it often is for mm -hmm. people that step into these kind of um, healing and guiding roles. But um, yeah, I guess for me, I um, the whole journey began um, when Saturn returned, 28, and I started to have a bit of a crisis. My, I was in a very um, dysfunctional long-term relationship, I would say, mm -hmm. and that ended. And it kind of started me on this deep healing journey um, where I was kind of learning to love myself and feel more worthy. And, you know, various things happened, uh, you know, did all sorts of different things. I ended up traveling in South America where I met you <laughs> and you know, I was doing plant medicine and the yoga meditation. I found myself um, very deep in a spiritual community in Mexico and I'd really opened my heart and I would had a lot of transformation but I found that I was still really kind of blocked around mm. um, relationships and sexuality and I could kind of see around me other women in similar positions like really beautiful women with like wonderful hearts and you know intelligent and uh, uh, emotionally mature and attractive but kind of struggling with this element of life and um, Around that time, I've been hearing a lot about Tantra um, in a more spiritual kind of uh, sense. And I was hearing about these Tantra workshops and how you can make lovemaking really sacred and it's a beautiful way to connect to the divine. And I was like, oh, like, I really want to try this, but I don't have anyone to try it with. Um, because all of the workshops were all about how um, it was quite heteronormative, actually. It was like a man and a woman coming together and, and doing these practices. So... Um, I felt quite sad at the time because it's something I knew that I was really called to experience and just kind of exploring and hearing things from other people. I kind of stumbled across pleasure, pleasure practices as a way and kind of self-pleasure as a way of um, opening to this on your own. And mm -hmm. I came across my teacher, Layla Martin, who was really teaching a lot about female pleasure and how to open at the time. And I was like, oh, amazing. Like, I don't need to wait till I found a partner before I can explore this part of myself. And, you know, the rest is kind of history. I've done um, a lot of work um, consciously around my sexuality and around conscious self-pleasure and embodiment over the past few years. And, um, you know, initially the intention was so that I could find a partner and so that I could feel better within myself and um, as I'm sure that you and maybe your listeners kind of have known if you've been on a spiritual journey, you often get more than what you thought you were going to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you often end up a whole different world like, wow, I didn't realize this was out here waiting for me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I guess that's kind of what started me on my journey. And then, of course, like the more that I experienced my own healing and the more that I learned, the more that I wanted to share it with other people. And I started, you know, to, to hold a couple of little workshops. And then I ended up um, studying with Layla Martin last year, this whole certification and how specifically how to coach women um, through this process. And um, yeah, that's I guess it's wow. just kind of one step at a time. That's basically how I've ended up here. Amazing, amazing. And thank you for sharing yeah. all that. And it's so funny. It's so lovely to hear yeah your journey and what happened to you after we parted ways in Colombia because you went north and made your way towards kind of Central um, America and to Mexico, whereas I was still going south. And it's amazing how we had two completely mm. different journeys, but a lot of similarities <laughs> as well. But I love how there are so many words there that you <laughs> spoke about that I'd love to touch on and just to 
help listeners as well to connect more to it. But what a beautiful journey, yeah, that you went on as well and really connecting to that self-love and and really that curiosity in kind of, well, something similar you said of, you know, wanting to better yourself nearly. So when you were in relationship, it would be a better relationship, you know, improve ourselves. And I think that's without that idea or that connotation, that's such a beautiful idea because that's the truth of it. You know, when we do work on ourselves, we can live completely different ways in every aspect of our lives. And it's so important because it's it's not anyone else's responsibility to, you know, make us feel any way or provide for us in any way. And yes, they can add to it but it's that whole thing of us being able to provide for ourselves in every way as well so I really like that but just before we we move on I'd love for you to because I think it's a word that's often coming up more and more is tantra just even to explain a little bit to people what exactly that is Ooh, that's quite a a big question and I'm not sure I can do it justice but I, I will do my best um, so there's kind of two ways to understand Tantra. Um, on the one hand, it's a, an ancient um, tradition that come from India that's highly spiritual. That's really all about union. It's about union of different energies within ourselves, within masculine and feminine. It's really about embracing all forms of life. And within Tantra, um, one of the things that we've picked up in the West is their kind of approach to sexuality. Um, so unlike many other spiritual traditions, Tantra really embraces sexuality. It sees it as sacred and also as a vehicle of actually connecting to the divine and also um, of self-development. So there is a branch of of Tantra that we've kind of picked up that's more like Neo-Tantra, which is really focusing on sexuality. And when you hear the word Tantra uh, kind of thrown around, that's probably what people are talking about. And when we kind of boil it down, modern Tantra is really about different ways that we can enhance connection, how we can slow down our lovemaking, how we can remove um, orgasm as a, a goal and just kind of enjoy the experience more. And there's a whole other kind of branch around that. So there's like these two different elements. And I guess for me, when I was in Mexico, I was kind of equally inspired by both elements because I was very inspired by the idea of sexuality as sacred and of a way to connect even deeper to the divine. And at the same time, I also, as I mentioned, was a bit blocked around relationships. And I love the idea of being able to connect um, with a man because I'm heterosexual um, on a deeper level than I'd been capable of in the past. Um, so, yeah, I guess for me, that's where my interest in Tantra comes from. And hopefully I've done that justice. But it is it yeah. is a whole branch and you can, you can have a whole podcast on it, Karen, with someone yeah. more experienced than I. <laughs> no, I'm absolutely sure. But like that, just since you mentioned it, just to give an explanation. And for me, I think, you know, you did it absolute justice, you know, in, in just giving a brief overview of kind of what it is and what it can be. Because like all of these topics, I think when it comes to whether it's Tantra or sacred sexuality or self pleasure pleasure or even just sex, pleasure, sensuality, sexuality in general, especially, well, probably for both sexes, but I think especially for women, there's often so much stigma and shame. And, you know, well, I know growing up in Catholic Ireland, it was very much like, oh, it's dirty. You don't go there. You don't talk about Mm. it. You know, the whole religious tie. How in your work have you seen it shift or what's your intention with your work as well and really to help just break down the the stigma around these topics Mm, yeah that is a great question thank you I mean there's a lot to touch on here but Mm. I think the part that I'm most really passionate about is I think as a society there is a lot of um we know we kind of see ourselves as quite sexually open in ways but there's also a lot of repression and miseducation and I think as a society, as a culture, there's a lot of things happening negatively in a, in a sexual way. And I think for both genders or, or people of non-binary genders as well, there, there's like a lot of deconditioning to be done. But for me, I guess I'm most passionate about women because I see how this conditioning is affecting women um, particularly strongly. And I've seen how cutting, like being forced to cut off from this part of ourselves um, is really disempowering. And what I've seen over and over again is when a woman begins to connect to her sexuality in this way and begins to own her pleasure, 
it's kind of like these magical things start happening. It's like she suddenly feels more worthy. She, she like comes alive. She like blooms. And it doesn't really matter how she's connecting to it because everyone has a unique sexuality. It could be Tantra. It could be, you know, receiving coaching. It could be exploring polyamory or kink. But whatever way the woman seems to be drawn in her own unique sexuality, when she connects to it, it's like suddenly like she feels worthy of of living the life of her dreams and and asking for what she deserves it's almost like what what i kind of like to to talk about for me like i've been developing a connection with with pussy with my pussy which is a whole journey in itself but what i have found is like pussy says to her, says to you like i know what you were you're worth i know what you deserve and she's not going to let you settle for anything less and and so I guess this is where for me the magic really comes alive to really to see these women and, and myself and my friends and my clients to begin to blossom and to feel this like inner empowerment that is kind of missing when you um, have a carrying this stigma and carrying the shame and carrying it like this cutting off an important part of who you are. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And what a beautiful word. I absolutely love that word blossom. Just when you say it, I just have so many visions and it's just really, really beautiful, like a flower or petals opening more and more and more and just showing more of themselves. But that's mm-hmm. so I love that, you know, the idea as well of connecting to that inner empowerment. And then what is a way for and I know there's obviously lots of ways, but even just for women who maybe still have a lot of shame or stigma, or the, even the idea of self pleasure or, you know, in the bedroom and actually touching themselves is really too far. I'm sure there's lots of other ways as well that they can begin to connect to self-pleasure and bring more of that into their lives and connect more with that inner empowerment. So what would be ways that would help even just in the initial steps? Yeah, that's another good question. I think this is a little bit individual to the woman, as you said, depends on where you're at, how much, uh, how much you're carrying from the past, you know, and particularly if a woman has had um, negative sexual experiences or assault or abuse or anything like that. It's a completely different journey that she goes on. Mm. But I guess for me, I think the first step for anyone, depending on where you're at, is this intention of love. So wherever you're at, whatever shame, whatever disgust, whatever uncertainty or fear comes up, really having that intention of love and bringing that into your sexuality. And so for some women, um, the, the journey can begin with a kind of re-education. So reading different books, listening to podcasts, getting yourself into more sex positive spaces to begin to kind of um, allow yourself mentally to open to that. Um, And then I think another really important stage is connecting to the body. And so this doesn't mean you have to go into full like self-pleasure if that's too scary. It can even just be learning to love your body. It can be connecting to your breasts, your belly or, or any part of your body. This is a really good uh, place to begin um, rather than feeling you have to maybe go straight for your, your genitals. Um, uh, you know, there is there's a way you can start to bring a more holistic uh, feeling mm-hmm. of love into your body. And this is a great place to start. Um, and then I think, you know, yeah, I, I would really like to empower each woman to kind of listen to your own intuition around this. Mm-hmm. I think once you have that intention, um, you can begin to attract to you the people and things that are going to support you on your journey, depending on what you need. Yeah. But as long as you have that, that kind of baseline of, of love and that intention to, to kind of be with whatever comes up, you can't really go wrong. Mm. Yes, as always, listening to our intention, it is our own internal GPS and guide. And like you say, it won't lead us wrong and it can't lead us wrong. But always the thing with intuition, when we get those little nudges or to, you know, read a book or reach out to a coach or connect with the like minded community, we have to take that step. We have to take the action or it doesn't happen. And I love that idea, you know, bringing the intention of love to everything and anything and even your body and even just everyday mundane things I find when we start to look at them with a sense of awe and wonder and just bring in that beauty and love it shifts everything and it has the capacity to shift everything because it like that it it brings us more present and we kind of come out of the the illusion and the stories in our mind so we can begin to heal and we can begin to mm. feel and allow maybe what was suppressed what was shoved down what we, we were denying within ourselves what we were afraid to show and it, it allows us 
you know, just, I think, feel more comfortable in that space, like you're saying, to even begin to allow our intuition to to lead us and guide us. So I, I love that idea of the intention to love as well. And I know you have obviously touched on it throughout the conversation so far, but even just helping women maybe to connect even more to how connecting to our own sense of pleasure really can be a catalyst for so many other areas of our lives and living truly fulfilled lives. Mm, yeah, I think that's a really important point that, um, that kind of the pursuit of pleasure and how it can really like fill us up and help us to pursue the lives that we, we desire. I think um, a, a woman in this space who has inspired me a lot, her name is Mama Gina, and she writes a book called Pussy, a Reclamation. And I remember this book has had a profound uh, effect on me because the way she talks about pleasure is it doesn't, you know, it's not just sexual pleasure we're Mm -hmm. seeking, it's pleasure in all forms. And as you begin to allow yourself to receive pleasure in, you know, the way that you mindfully eat your food, the way that you bathe yourself, Mm -hmm. the way that you, you know, run your fingers through your hair and just all these little kind of um, moments of pleasure throughout your day, going for a massage, um, spending time, you know, in nature, whatever brings you pleasure, it, it, it kind of increases your pleasure muscle. And, and this can be a journey in and of itself to, to ha- give yourself permission even to feel pleasure when, as a woman, you, you may have been conditioned that everyone else comes first and you and mm-hmm. your pleasure and your desires come last. And, you know, but, you know there's a, a balance in society where there's give and take and I think a lot of women have been trained to give give and not so much to receive in the turn and I think the pursuit of pleasure can really help to to rewire that as well yeah love that and um you know that word you mis- mentioned as well permission like it's it's so true and even I know for me it was just such a whole awakening and mindset shift and really allowing myself to to go there in all aspects just to even think of the possibility that it's okay to receive and it's safe to receive and you know Mm. it's okay to relax and be feminine because again you know my experience in society as well and different journeys is you know I went into my masculine energy as a form of protectionism and I saw the feminine as weak and vulnerable and it was just like oh my god don't go there because you'll get destroyed or you'll get trampled on or whatever crazy stories I was telling myself which Mm -hmm. is you know so not true either when we are in our divine feminine and connected to our true truth and core in that vulnerability it is so empowering like it's actually our greatest strength but it is that whole shift and I suppose that's that's the work you know and even you know when you mentioned that book like pussy your reclamation I'm sure that word pussy a lot of people are probably like oh I can't believe they're using that word and you know for me as well initially Mm. it was like oh I don't know but again it's every every time we're triggered it's an invitation for ourselves to look at well what is it within me that this is triggering because that's that's the learning that's where the wisdom lies and you know that's the the invitation for all of us all the time and just something just touching back on another word that you mentioned that even a friend of mine were talking about recently and the idea of sacred sexuality and what does what does that mean for you Mm, yeah well ultimately for me it's kind of a radical shift from the way that we have been taught to view sexuality in our society it's kind of like maybe a little bit dirty, maybe a little bit wrong and something that, you know, maybe that needs to be hidden um, and has certain agendas behind it or maybe even just for making babies. And into this reclamation of the innocence of sexuality, when it's in its, you know, it's pure and when it's connected to the heart and love, it, it really is innocent and beautiful and it is sacred. Like, I think sexuality can be a portal to some of the most divine and spiritual experiences. And I can, I can mm-hmm. speak from personal experiences that it is really possible for the experience of sex and pleasure to feel divine and sacred and to connect you deeper to yourself, deeper to your partner and deeper to the universe, God, energy, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is for you and your, in your spirituality. But it is a, a, a sh- an absolute paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. to be able to experience this and I think you know you may be listening to this and maybe you're you're, you're not sure but I I wonder if there's a part within you listeners that that kind of is like yes like 
I know deep down in my bones that this is true. I know mm. that what I've been taught is not the truth because our, you know, our unique um, sexuality before we come into the, the world um, and get all this conditioning is really quite innocent and beautiful. Like even babies mm. and, and children, they touch themselves to give themselves pleasure and they don't know that it's, it's shameful in our society. And their parents might say, oh, you know, Tommy, don't touch your, your doodle, it's, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. And, but for the child, it's actually they understand that it can be innocent and pure and, and sacred. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, it's like almost like we're coming back to that innocence and coming back to that purity and um, sacredness. Mm. Love that. And, th- you know, that really is it. It is so pure. And when you're coming from that heart centered space and that love and that innocence, it is absolutely a million percent divine. And again, you know, the journey is always about getting out of our own head and the thoughts and the meanings that we have created of things or the beliefs and the conditioning that we have taken on and when you kind of take those off and come back to just yourself again and stand in your own worthiness and enoughness you're just like oh my god you know so it is that 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 true divine connection again and I think it is really really pure and then what from maybe your work or even in the different groups or communities you're connecting with Well, have you seen more blocks when it comes to sacred sexuality in men or women, or are they kind of equal? And then what happens when either a man or a woman in the relationship steps into this space? What is the potential that can happen and the shifts within the relationship? Mm, Wow, yeah. Well, I have to say most of my journey has been working with women, so I don't feel like I can categorically speak about men from mm-hmm. a lot of experience, yeah. but I actually think that both genders are quite blocked, and I think maybe even men might struggle with this more than women to some extent. I think we have different conditionings that we need to let go of. I think a lot of women hear about sacred sexuality and they kind of know intuitively, like, yes, that feels true within me, and, and it's kind of a bit more of a resonance, even if there's like a fear or a blockage or a like, unworthiness around that but I think for often when men are presented with that concept there's a little kind of a different response a different defense mechanism that comes up it can kind of be dismissed or you know it just feels like another pressure not only do they like men are under a lot of pressure to perform sexually anyway and now they're told they need to also make it sacred and on top of everything else and so I think mm. it can be harder for men and it's often what I've seen is it's the woman that's actually initiating their partner or man mm. into the sacred sexuality um, and it can happen both ways of course like this is broadly generally speaking but it does tend to be the woman that's kind of drawn to that and like initiating their partner into it um, and yeah I guess what I've seen is I think when it comes to practicing more of a sacred sexuality, all of our blocks to intimacy and connection come up. Um, from personal experience, I have found in the past it was definitely easier to connect to partners just on a sexual kind of primal lustful level to bring the heart and the connection and the intimacy into that as well. For me anyway, and I think for many people and also for many men especially, it can be very challenging. And so you think that you're on this journey to explore sexuality and you are, but actually what you're exploring is so much deeper and so much more profound. And I think really, really can enhance relationships in beautiful ways if, if both partners are on, on board with it. Um, and that can be part of the challenge to get both partners uh, on board and both really wanting to experience it together. But when they do, it, it really does. And I have seen many relationships um, within uh, my kind of community and the course I've been studying that they really blossom and they really um, come to a, a new level. And also some relationships kind of fall apart because um, one partner doesn't want to take the journey and the other does. So both can happen. Mm, love that. And um, yeah, you know, I do believe that both genders are really blocked. But um, as you mentioned there as well, that it's often the, the woman who initiates that. And I can really believe that because even, well, I think from how we've been programmed and how we've been operating in society so far, we've all been pushed into our masculine men and women. And like you say, you know, there's been lots of pressure on men as well, extra pressure in every sense. So I think when women do step into this, their own true connection again, and that divine 
feminine and connecting to their own vulnerability and sacredness and bringing that energy to a relationship or even to life, to our work, to everything, it does shift everything because everything is energy. Energy always has to balance. So when women start to connect back to this way of being again and their innate state, it does help men as well. So I can imagine that you know it allows both to go on a really deeper and like you say you're exploring so so much more it's so much more deeper than just you know the the sexuality piece or the sex or the pleasure it's um on all levels mentally physically emotionally and spiritually i think so so yeah amazing then also curious as well from you know and maybe you've touched on it but from your own journey and your own work and leading others and connecting with others what has been the most enlightening or the best thing for you Hmm. I don't know I guess for for me personally I mean there's my personal experience what's been most enlightening and then there's also that deep satisfaction of seeing other people kind of bloom and come into their essence um I think it's just for me it's kind of almost hard to put into words but it just feels magical and it honestly feels like it's a bit of a missing piece Um, in our society and in our spirituality and I guess yeah for me the most enlightening part has has kind of learning how sexuality fits into everything how it's a piece of a puzzle how it's a part of life how you know that that eros that life force energy moves in all different ways and just really experiencing within myself and seeing without like around me how when we repress this life force energy lots of not great things happen you know there's a there's a reason that a lot of um there's a lot of unsavory things that happen in our world around sexuality and i believe that a part of the reason that happens is because the energy is repressed because it Mm -hmm. still wants to move but when it's repressed it comes out in its shadow so for me like i guess the most enlightening thing has been really to to see how it looks when it's not in its shadow when Mm -hmm. it's in its light form when it's connected to love and um the kind of like the depths that it really takes you to, um, the depths within yourself that you didn't even really know was there until until you explore it. Um, that, that's kind of the best yeah. that I can explain it. I feel like it's a bit bit kind of hard to to really, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure hard to explain, but that's a beautiful, beautiful depiction because, you know, as you say, when we suppress anything, energy is energy and it has to manifest in some way. And, you know, that's why society and so many things of all different levels go on because it is the shadow aspect it is from our suppression or denial or not wanting to see or avoiding or running away whereas no we have to face them we have to see the the limiting beliefs the conditioning what's holding us back what emotions are blocked within us to release them to connect to every part of us and to live from that light filled love filled you know pure innocent place which it is totally and utterly magical on all aspects again so what a really empowering message as well i think to end on but if there is anything else coming up that you feel you'd like to share before we wrap up, please do. And please also share where people can find out more about your work. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure being here today. I think the only other thing that I'd really like to share is just like encouragement and also mm-hmm. a message of hope. Really, if you feel called to this, if there's something within you that is saying, oh, like, yeah, like I'm really longing for that or it sounds great, like start your journey start like reading books following people um and you know tuning into that inner wisdom for how that's going to look for you Mm -hmm. and it is a journey but 100 percent, there is hope like you are not broken like there is so much beauty and love inside you that is just waiting to be revealed and explored Mm and i am a million percent confident in this for you so yeah if this has touched you in any way this is your this is your permission slip Mm -hmm. this is your encouragement and your permission slip to go and follow your pleasure you have my permission you're allowed to do it and you have my encouragement Um, amazing beautiful beautiful (laughs) beautiful um and if if you want to follow me you can find me at the moment on instagram my handle is gina.heart so g-i-n-a dot heart and I'll be sharing different little pieces there and you can also have coaching available if you would like really personal support to help you on the journey you're about to go on brilliant thank you so so much and as always I will have your Instagram link as well in the show notes and just yeah it's just 
amazing to connect to have this conversation and to hear of your journey and how you've blossomed as well since since our first meeting in Colombia back in 2017 so it's absolutely beautiful and it's such an honor to connect again and watch you and learn from you and bring this this message to more people so thank you so much Oh, thank you so much, Karen. I feel so filled with gratitude that, you know, we've been able to stay in contact and that we met all those years ago and look at us go now. And um, it's really been such an honor to be included on your podcast. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you get notified every time a new show is released. Get more information on this week's guest as well on my website www.soulpowerlight.com.